Welcome back. Yes, indeed. We're starting off with that today on the program. We've got uh, Ambassador Genyi Lawal here with us. He is the President, Association of Foreign Relations Professionals of Nigeria. Thank you for coming on this morning, sir. Thank you for having me. What do the foreign professionals think of this in the first place? Well, first of all, let me say that this is not a foreign policy problem. It's a problem of uh, 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 the, the way you conduct your internal affairs. But I can uh, excuse you if you look at uh, foreign policy itself as emanating uh, from your internal policy. And if you also look at government as an input-output system, whereby what you get in dictates what you send out. So I will excuse you on that because we believe that there must be a foreign policy component in some of the decisions that your government uh, makes here. Do you think we've conducted ourselves properly in that regard? Well, I think that uh, I would not give a pass mark in that area because the idea of uh, the, the reason given by the United States you know, about uh, identity management has been... Has been, uh, has been with us for a very long time. Uh, I remember during my days in the service, you know, when people are arrested for either fraud or for this or that, and they claim to be Nigerians, and then they contact the Nigerian embassy, you get there to find out that they are not Nigerians. In some cases, police have arrested people with a forged driver's license, and the embassy is contacted to come and identify it. it becomes a problem because we don't even know how they get these drivers and say some from the local government from but no local government. so that should be a centralized way you know of doing because uh, driver's license is a very serious identity where I use it to travel even without passport sometimes over there because they believe everything about you is there so right now Nigeria cannot uh, claim that it does not know that they have to have a data, a, a, a credible data on every Nigerian. That's why sometimes you go abroad, you just call your social insurance number, everything about you is seen. So what, why is it difficult for Nigerians to also have a, a such number? Right. Although I know government is trying, they've been trying, they've been trying, but it's not enough, you know, such that uh, this is now rub off on your international outlook by which Nigeria is being categorized as a nation, you know, with uh, countries like Kazakhstan, I said, no, it's not very good for us. I can, I, I can admit so that. What does that do to the image of, of a nation like Nigeria? Yeah, that is what I'm saying. Nigeria should not be categorized along to, uh, such countries like uh, failed nations and things like that. Why? Why should Nigeria be categorized as a uh, part of a, a, a country that, uh, that is failing simply because of uh, identity? For instance, we remember when they brought in the... Uh, uh, the, the, what do you call it, the, uh, the mobile phone something. We try to use it as a way of jump-starting identity. That before you can get a telephone, or a, a cell phone number, we have all your data, your picture, your everything. In fact, to the point of uh, even getting your, uh, what do you call it, uh, your, your blood type and things like that. So we feel that uh, the, 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 the basket of those people who have a telephone that time you know, could be used to jumpstart, you know, identity. Because abroad, call your telephone number, everything about you is, all, is also there. You see, but we failed. Secondly, they started the national identity card. You know, the thing became more about right away. You even find some people who should not have Nigerian ID. You find it with them. Why should it be? And this also <laughs> tells you the story of we ourselves as individuals. How much do you like your country? You know, I used to know some countries that you can find corruption, but when it comes to national security, they won't do it with you. Countries like Ghana, India, even they take bribery. But when it comes to their own national security, like your identity or you want, no, they will not take bribe from you. They will insist that you, you, you are not qualified or you go for the, you do the right thing. So we individuals, we Nigerians too, you know, we should be prepared, you know, to save our country from by, you know, if you are, find yourself in an office, a sensitive office, like uh, uh, you issue a security document, and, you are, and then you are now taking bribe in order to, 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 to outsmart the system. 
No, we, we have to we have to ch have a change of mind too. We we need us. <clears throat> you know, I was looking through the the process. I mean, yeah. the proclamations that were made prior to 2017, before Nigeria was eventually included, and you will see the rigorous process which the United States goes through before these issues are decided on with the Department of Homeland Security. How they you know update the process and ensure that the country is safe. And you know, it got me wondering how much of that do we even do in Nigeria, especially when it comes to relations with other countries, because. They would say that this issue of terrorism, banditry, is as a result of people coming in from other countries to reside in the country and then cause mayhem. So as a country, how well do we, you know, handle the issues of immigration, who should come in, who should not, which countries perhaps should not come in as a nation? Yeah, like I said earlier on, we are not doing a good job of that, you know. Particularly, the last time we discussed the, the uh, visa on entry, I remember I made it clear here that uh, I believe yeah, it's a way of encouraging other African countries, you know, to sign on to, uh, you know, making uh, free trade, free movement of people uh, and things possible. Because if if Nigeria does not sign on to something in Africa, sometimes it doesn't it doesn't take. It. But then there must be modalities. I remember I told you that one of the modalities is that if you are coming to Nigeria, you first of all go online, you know, to notify the immigration people that you are coming to Nigeria, then they begin profiling you if you are qualified. If you are not qualified, you will not get a sleep that you will bring to Nigeria. I remember I said it here, that you will not get a sleep that you will not bring to Nigeria to say that, okay, I have been pre-authorized you know, to come to Nigeria. I said it much. But when we called the director of immigration that day, we didn't hear anything like that. We just said, we are ready, we are ready. No, that's not it. You know, fine. At the international level, Nigeria wants to lead to encourage free trade, free movement, but there must be modalities of doing so. You know, if you if your internal system is not ready to absorb that thing, or you are not ready, then you can have a way, you know, of of, of slowing it slowing it down. So on this identity management crisis, Nigeria has a, a, a lot of a ample opportunity to up its game, you know, by making sure that we don't fall into this category. And I can tell you that uh, the foreign, the, the Nigerian embassy, you know, must have been sending a lot of fillers, you know, to the government. Yes, Nigerian embassy mm -hmm. in the U.S. In the U.S. Must have been sending fillers home that uh, this is what is being required of us. We have to, but are they mm -hmm. going to do it themselves? So what, what, yeah, part of that communication that we had previously yeah. too was, because before this was announced, yeah. I think there was a statement credited to the Minister of Information where he says it would be unfortunate if we're included in that list. Yeah. And then there was subsequent communication that, well, Nigeria didn't have any prior notice before that happened, only for then you to hear, well, they actually informed the country. So in having all of those communications, it just looks as if it's uncoordinated. Well, well I agree with you. It looks uncoordinated. But during our own time in the, in the, in the foreign service, there is what we call flimsies. This flimsy file, you know, begins to show communication between Nigeria and other countries. At the end of the day, the FIMC file goes round all of us. We all know what's, what is going on. So when you now go for an interministerial meeting, you are able to feed in into that so that in interministerial meeting, the security chief, all of them will be there from all, everybody, every ministry will send representative. So when it comes to Nigeria to brief that meeting, some of these things you, you have will come out so that every department will know what is required of him to do. Like I said, if you look at government as an input-output system, this kind of input into the system will engender a lot of reaction, you know, from the other, like, this is a problem for Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs. And uh, if uh, the, the foreign ministry has been happening on the Ministry of Internal Affairs, that uh, we are being warned, we are being warned, up your game, you know, time is going, and things like that. I don't know whether they still have it now, because that time, every three, three months, we have interministerial meeting. You know, that every department, you know, we come together and then we share information. And everybody knows what to do. I don't know whether they are doing that or not. And again, it has come to a state where even the head of state itself, you have another source of information. During our time, we write brief to Dorian Barracks almost every day. From, if you watch Professor Gambari when he was uh, uh, giving lecture during our annual, uh, annual lecture last July, he mentioned that when he was foreign minister, every morning this, part, this same head of state demands that he wants to see your brief 
personally by himself. That means that 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 is a serious uh, uh, what do you call that is that's a serious uh, way of doing things. I tell you know because of the image of the country. Because whatever you say today, you say Buhari foreign policy. No matter who is the minister, it's Buhari foreign policy. So that time you have to, you make sure every department you brief the minister. The minister will now summarize it as every morning. He said he wants it personally. So that uh, you you ha you are you kept uh, abreast of uh, what what is I don't know whether they still do that one now. Well, a, a little detail I'm sure you are not unaware of is that um, part of what the U.S. has said as far as this issue is concerned is that immigrants from Nigeria and three other countries in they, they will no longer be eligible for visas allowing them to live in the U.S. However, they will qualify for tourist and business visas. Okay, uh, does that change anything? Well, somehow, what, the, what, is, what that one is saying is that, uh, you know, when they do their things over there, they direct it at what is the actual problem. The actual problem is about people overstaying and people wanting to go and live in the United States. And I can tell you that uh, you are going to, they are going to require police reports on you if you are trying to uh, immigrate to the United States. It's part of the uh, conditions. You must bring a police report. Nigerian police report. Nigeria, yes, but how good is that your Nigerian police report? You go, go to Alagbon, give them some money, and then you get... The police himself does not even know you. So where is that data? That is what they are saying. Do you have data on your citizen that you can vouch that, okay, this one is from uh, Gungula State, this one is from uh, Soso State? No, it's, it's, not, it's not well managed as far as I'm concerned. And that is one of them. You don't forget they have their diplomats here too, who are... Collecting information and sending reports home. That uh, you know, don't rely on uh, Nigeria. I have been in a court in Canada where the judge was asking that uh, they have information that you should not rely on Nigerian uh, driver's license. No, I had to, to to go there to say, look, you, 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 we don't have a central system of using driver's license. So there's no way anybody can tell you that this is uh, uh, genuine or this is not. Every state has its own. So you cannot say that one driver's license is not genuine. Uh, the, the judge says, that's so. I say, yeah, well, we, we only use that to free our citizens, you know. But that does not mean it's right. Do you think that's why, pardon me, there's a renewed drive for this national identity management? Yes, I think it's part of it because of the pressure, you know, that is being uh, put on the government that uh, you have to have a good identity management, uh, you know, data system. That uh, everybody should come into that data. Why is it difficult? A country like Chad, they have Ghana, Togo, they have their number. You know, even without, without your passport, that your number takes you everywhere. It, it, it even rubs on doing business. For this time, if you want to get credit, credit card abroad now, they ask you for some information, you know, including who you are. And those information comes from the number you give them. Once you are given a number, it means you are already in the system. If you are arrested by police somewhere and things like that. And I think Lagos State Government is, is trying now because now you can, you can even use plate number to identify people, which is also possible abroad. You know, if you commit crime and run away, just let them pick your plate number, they'll find you. You know, that is the type of thing they're talking about that we should be able to have. And I'm sure the government is trying, you know, but, you know, <laughs> well, I gave it to them, 200 million people. It's but, not but, easy. <laughs> okay, is that, the, is that one reason you would adduce to why government has not been able to achieve that, you know, feat of putting everyone in the... What the, reason is that? The irresponsibility of putting everyone in the system, as you have said, capturing everyone in the, in the data bank. Of course, that is what is called uh, identity data management. Yes, crisis. so what is the impediment now? Why is it that it's taken so many years already? This is what I told you, that uh, we have been on this for a very long time. And I don't see any reason why we shouldn't have uh, be, be done with it. Everybody should have had the number. Okay. But right now, I think they are the, with uh, digital technology, uh, there was something somebody sent to me that if you press so and so on your phone, you will get your, is it teen or something like that? Uh, so, Vivian. Uh, so something like that, you know. So this is what we are saying, that you, you should be able to be identified. In fact, it makes it easy for, even for you to be able to get credit card, to get small loans, and because they know you. You don't want to do business with somebody you don't know. But if I have your number, I know that I, where I can find you, this is where you live, this is this, is that. Then it's easy for me to deal with you. If we were to expand this uh, conversation, yeah. 
So this is the U.S. taking this decision now. Yeah. Do you see this kind of thing happening again from any other country? Yes, it's possible because the U.S. takes the lead. And, and for instance, you know, most uh, government now, they, they share information. For instance, if you want to immigrate to a country like, uh, uh, let us say, uh, let us say France, and then you start processing your paper, and, and it is found that uh, you are been to U.S., they will go to contact them. They share information. But this is for those who overstay their visas. Yeah, those people who want to go and settle and live in those countries. Okay. They need information. The immigrant visas. But those people who are going, coming, they already have your data. You know, if you be to the U.S., once in your lifetime, is there. Because, Anytime because you come with, back. With this one, yeah. people who are doing business over there can still travel. Oh, they will travel. Be one, be two. That's to, going, coming. But you're saying that for the fact that it was even mentioned against us, it's not good for the image of the country. Exactly. That's what all. you are saying. Okay. Nigeria should not be classified along uh, failed states. You know, just before now, Chad was also part of the countries that but had they're the out. But they're out. Yeah. And you know, the government of the U.S. said, they improved on yeah. one of the things you mentioned, yeah, identity management. I can management. tell you that Nigeria will soon be out too. Exactly, and they say they do a review every 180 yeah, Nigeria days. Nigeria will soon be out of it uh, but because you, you know, we, are doing, we are doing a lot, you know, in terms of this uh, identity, uh, identity management. Right, but yeah. earlier on you said this is not a foreign policy issue, but you know, if you sit in the same room, for example, with, yeah. with someone from the other country and you, you know that there's that restriction, as it were, there will always be that psyche. So are you sure this will not affect you know, relations between both countries? Well, I don't see it as affecting relations between both countries because, like I said, this is, uh, an in that is a way, an internal problem, the way you conduct your affairs. What has that got to do with your, although I, when I started, I told you that uh, if you look at uh, input-output system, that whatever you feed into the system, you know, determine what goes out of it. And if you also look at the fact that uh, Foreign policy is an extension of your domestic policy. Yeah, definitely it rubs on your foreign policy. It rubs on your foreign outlook. It rubs on everything, you know. So, but it's not a foreign policy per se that you can say Minister of Foreign Affairs is doing this or Nigerian embassy is no. But do you think there could have been, you know, more dialogue per se between the United States and Nigeria such that the U.S. will say, we see you're a strategic partner to us. Because if you see the proclamation, the president actually mentioned the fact that, you know, some of those countries are major partners when it comes to fighting terrorism, economic partners. So yeah. there are people we interface with on a daily basis. So do you yeah. think there could have been more, you know, interaction saying that, you know, we'll give you six months, we'll give you a year, yeah. sort this out before we move on. Do you think there could have been well, that? Well, you have two years. You didn't read that? Over the past two years, they've been saying this. That you, are, you see, Nigeria has a lot of goodwill with a number of countries. Mm -hmm. but to, and that, those goodwill is because Nigerians generally, I'm talking of individually, we conduct ourselves very well. We are very proud of our country. Some of this uh, accolade that Nigerian government is getting, is a result of individual effort that you go, I mean, you go to a country, you behave well because you don't want to be identified as uh, this, as that, you know, that kind of thing. This is your own personal choice, you know. But government benefit from it because mm. what it means that you are in Nigeria. Anywhere you go, you are still in Nigeria. So you try to conduct yourself well. But we don't want a, a, a situation where government will not begin you know, to, to, uh, uh, to disturb you know, uh, that image that you have been able to build for yourself because of their internal, yeah. uh, internal conduct. You don't want that. So as you mean, you know, Nigeria launches a visa policy, or we'll okay. do something about our visa policy today. What would you want to see us address? Our visa policy, don't forget that uh, visa policy is reciprocal. But you see, when you talk of reciprocity, you reciprocate with people you can, uh, uh, you can get to be, you can do something and get to be with them. You don't reciprocate with people who are senior to you in some areas. You discuss with them, you know, and get some, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, the guest of concessions, you know. So now I know Nigeria will continue to discuss with the uh, United States, and then they've been giving us concession anyway for two years, you but, know. But that concession <laughs> is for a reason, because, yeah. I mean, the embassy is here, there's a lot of funds that go uh, from those visa fees that Nigerians pay, so... What, what, why, do you think they call, why, why do you think they call you strategic partners? Uh -huh. They know what they're getting from you, and they don't want to lose you. So somehow they have a way of oh, it is our friend, but uh, 
No, I mean, you see, foreign relation is also about personal relation. Like, like you and me, we meet somewhere. Ah, okay. But this is my friend from China. <laughs> I'm not going to. But I will tell you that you have to do this. But you've been doing that for two years. That you need to do this. But I know that Nigeria will soon get out of it because okay. we always have a way of, uh, you know, putting our acts together. And, uh, Hopefully, because one thing you said the other time, you know, give me a little bit of shivers, which is the fact that this could happen from other countries as well. Yeah, it's now, cool. Let's expand this to uh, Nigeria's foreign offices in various countries. Yeah. You know, it could be a reflection also of how Nigerian business, how Nigeria as a country conducts its business when the foreign affairs offices or the embassies there, you know, the way they, they conduct their business with the Nigerians there. I mean, you are not unaware of the complaints that come from Nigerians. Yeah, like I said, yeah, and I run, you know, the way you conduct your internal policy sometimes rubs on, you know, your foreign policy. Now, like you have said now, you're talking about passport. This is not a responsibility of the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. It's a responsibility of uh, the immigration. And foreign is that affairs, then, sorry, sir, is that then putting a question on the on the cooperation or interrelations of agencies? This is what I told you about interministerial uh, meeting. We always have that every three months during our own time. I don't know when I stay on now. At interministerial meeting, people come so with their concern that uh, you are giving us challenges here. You have to do if. Minister of Internal Affairs, you know, has been part of, it, uh, of the interministerial meeting. It will have heard from the representative of foreign ministry that this is a concern that we are getting from our partners, you know, in the international system. You have to do something about it. So beyond the, uh, sorry, beyond the NIMC issue now, the yeah. data management issue, what other things would you like us, what would you want done or would you want seen to be done in order for this not to continue? Uh, well, what I can say is that uh, right now that uh, uh, Nigeria is already, uh, uh, what do you call it, is already handling the identity Money through needs. the national ID card, I want the government to accelerate it so that uh, at least uh, it will be seen by the world that uh, we are doing much. You know, it's a very big country, a large number. And one way you can also do is to decentralize it. You know, there is no way you can over centralize administration of 200 million people. You won't get, you won't get anywhere. Decentralize it and then have a national data. Let Lagos State come with its own Bombay State. Then there's a national data there, you know. So you the federal government cannot do everything alone. Because you know we, we improved concerning yeah. the driver's li driver's license. Yes, we have, we have. So we that have. is accepted now. Yes. We so have. this yeah. would not be any different because yeah. I mean if you I improve, think the government even, even with passport, we have improved yeah. now. Before you can send the, uh, your photograph and get the passport, you can't do that now. You have to be there physically. They have to see you. So now so that we've improved, yeah. government did set up a committee to look into all these issues so that they can address some of those. Yeah. Would you expect some sort of uh, comment or reaction concerning this visa fee? I know that that matter wasn't properly cleared at the time Nigeria said, well, uh, what uh, they had to pay to get a Ni uh, Nigerian visa was different. At that point, it was a little lower. So do you expect them to come out pointedly and say, well, this is what it is since we are paying this amount? For our own visas uh, to get the U.S. visa, that is standard in international relations. Whatever they charge your citizen, you charge their citizen. The currency difference, not that. No, no, you, you, you come, if it's convertible, you convert it. You know that that is standard. There is no question about that. If they are just giving you concession, maybe because of uh, of relationship or, or or partnership, they are just uh, doing that to you. But international standard is that uh, whatever you pay is what we pay. Do you agree with the school of thought that, that says, well, look, they thought that our, our ambassador in the U.S. should have done a lot more, something that, look, if you have someone if you're a lot young and vibrant, you could always pull your weight in that regard, and perhaps we may not have found ourselves here. Does that fly with you? Well, I don't think so. Because what does the ambassador do? It's just a representational head. The people who are doing the work at the foreign... Uh, my friend just came back from the other Azan was there. You can see the type of uh, send-off or send-forth party they, they gave to him. You would think it's the ambassador, but yet yeah, it's number two. But that's a professional, you know, because they knew that he was doing his job, you know, properly. So the ambassador is just uh, 
representation. It, it so, doesn't have to be <laughs> there all the time. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on this morning, Ambassador Gadilawa, <laughs> thank you very much. the president of uh, mm -hmm. Foreign Association of Foreign Relations Professionals of Nigeria. Yeah. We're back in a moment. Yeah. Stay with us.